Good morning, everybody. It's Vision 360 Fire Financials. Hey, today we're going to be talking another video about the Fire Fund movement and investing during turbulent times. As you guys know, these times that we're facing right now are kind of uncertain uh, with inflation going through the roof, uh, kind of uncertainty in products and supplies, and a lot of other issues going on just across the entire globe. So this goal of this video is really to kind of smooth those worries out and really show you how over the long run, um, this could really just be a blimp in history. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing, there's gonna be three big things that we need to gather from today's video. But let's start off with the first one, and that is your mindset, right? And also stick to to the end, and I'm gonna show you guys a chart and why this matters the most. Uh, I'm gonna show a, a passive income dividend chart of when the market's down, how you us passive investors actually get more return for their yield. So that mindset. So when you're investing, you want to tr typically always choose quality over quantity. And so that's just the value versus the risk that you're taking, right? And so the comparison could be like GameStop to PG, Procter & Gamble. And so GameStop, as you know, is kind of fading out because there's so many other online retail websites, Amazon and other other places, right, Walmart, et cetera, that are selling games and doing everything that GameStop is doing. And so it's kind of a dying out kind of uh, thing versus Procter & Gamble makes common household products. So like they're in the home and beauty uh, sector. So they make all kinds of things from toilet paper to cleaning wipes to uh, toothpaste, all kinds of goods, right? And so that's not going out of style anytime soon. So it's just a matter of picking companies that are always going to have a demand, right? And then also investing for the long term. So the long term, you know, you always want to set aside a certain amount of money, right? And some people say five or 10% of your income for your working years. I say that's BS. I say you should try to set aside anywhere from 30 to 70%, especially if you want to do the fire movement. Um, and you should set it you know, into a good investment fund, such as like my dividend portfolio, which I also link down below. That's another good one. Uh, I update that as well all the time. Uh, and I keep track with my Simply Safe dividends to make sure that the portfolio is performing at a good yield. So with dividends reinvested, I'm looking at about a 14% dividend reinvestment compound interest rate. Um, and then that's constantly tracked. So I always look at that. So invest into a good portfolio like that. Also kind of set it and forget it, guys. So don't be looking at it like multiple times a week thinking, oh, man, I'm going to be rich overnight kind of thing. It's one of those things that you get rich over the next decade, you know, and it really shines over that time period. Right. And then after that, it's just phenomenal. And so it's kind of a set it and forget it. But you don't want to completely forget it because you want to keep up on your companies and make sure they're still performing which leads to making sure you buy quality companies to begin with. And then you want to autopilot. it. So let's say you want to do 50% of your income, your take home income into this fire fund and to your investments. So you automatically automate that to come out of your paycheck and or your, your checking account. And whether you do that monthly, weekly, I recommend trying to do it weekly because then you're able to invest into the market, especially if you're using the stock market or passive income dividend investments in the stock market. It's good to dollar cost average. So by doing that, you can do it just weekly. Uh, just pick a day during the week. Uh, typically, I usually don't go at the beginning or the end of the week because it's usually more volatile. I usually like to go somewhere in the middle towards the end of the week. Uh, that's just me though. And then typically uh, with M1 Finance, you can do that as well. So, and a lot of brokerages offer that as well. And then, Another thing is, if you're going to check it, guys, try to just keep it to checking it no more than once a week, if not even just once a month. And you could even go further than that. Some people say only twice a year, you're good. So it really depends. But the more often you check it, the more problems could arise from trying to change things. Uh, believe me, I've had those issues myself. And then at the end of the day, you know, don't get discouraged, right? And so you're not going to see this account grow by millions overnight, but that's not the point of it. The point is to buy, provide good, reliable, passive income for you and your family uh, into the future, right? And so we don't care about only 
you know, the now or tomorrow we care about five, 10, 15 years, 20 years down the road, right? So generational wealth. So the next biggest thing we need to talk about is control. And so that's keeping your emotions in check. So really don't let uh, your investment, you know, be led by your emotions. So don't lead by emotions, right? Just only use them when helping to decide if a company is good or not. So what I mean by that is you're always checking the company's financial statement. And you can do that through multiple brokerages. They have that. And also Simply Safe Dividends, another good one. Uh, not a sponsor, but I really like them myself. I use them. Uh, so there's multiple places. You can even go on to Yahoo Finance. So you don't have to do anything fancy. But keeping those emotions in check is huge because when the market goes down, which is going to lead us into the next thing, 5, 10, 15, 20, 40 percent, maybe more overnight. Um, you know, a lot of people are very uh, tested and want to sell. But that is the worst time to sell. It's actually the best time to buy. If you buy good companies to begin with, you know their financial statement and their mission has not changed since that crash in their share price. There's absolutely no reason to get rid of them. If anything, it's more of a reason to buy them more because it's a Black Friday sale at that point. Most people like to buy things 40, 50, 60 percent off or more. Uh, but when it comes to their stocks, they all run and try to sell them for that discount and lose a lot of money. So it makes no sense. So don't be that person. When everybody's scared, that's for you to be a little greedy and then keep investing and or invest more. As long as you know what you're investing in is still good as it was yesterday so that's really the last one is the market control which leads into a little bit of the motions a little too and that is don't lose faith because the market is down whether it be 5 10 15 20 40 50 60 80 percent i know those are some big numbers but as a value and a dividend investor you know you're really able to snowball your investments more and more during a bear market a bear market if you guys don't know it's just something where the market is down for a consecutive long period of 5, 10, 15 years, uh, where the growth portfolios really don't gain anything over that entire period, but a dividend investor gets that dividend. And typically we see in bear markets, that dividend is usually a higher yield because the share price is down, which causes the yield to go up because the payout is still, let's say roughly the same, which we can actually look and find out typically what happens to the dividend yield as we look here on Simply Safe, is about a 2% reduction overall, uh, which is not much considering the stock price up averaged a 32% reduction. So you're still able to reinvest at you know a 30% reduction for the same amount of dividend investment, therefore really snowballing your investment. Because you still have we're getting let's say two dollars from this company. And let's say the stock was fifty dollars before the crash. Let's say it's twenty-five. Now you're effectively buying twice as many uh, shares for the same price, or excuse me, twice as many shares for half the price. So it's a way better deal. It's like that Black Friday shopping, except for your portfolio, right? So now, what I also want to talk about is really, you know, showing you guys this example, right? And so uh, let's let's dig into that a little bit. All right. So here's our example uh, with our dividend calculator on market beat. So I just took a starting principal portfolio of $100. Annual contribution, I came to $39,200. People, well, some people in the comments will say, oh, that's a lot. But realistically, I looked at the 2020 and 2021 medium average income, and it's about $80,000. Factor in a 30% tax, and we get to 50, 56, 57,000 after tax, and you may have even more write-offs, so you may even have more than that. Uh, and then we can factor in, you know, a 70% fire movement, which is very aggressive. And that comes to $39,200, which is our annual contribution to our portfolio. We can factor in a 15% long-term dividend tax rate because they're qualified dividends, the majority of them. And that yield, I just used a 6% because typically during a market downturn, the yield for companies, which are now, say, 3 4% are usually 6 to 
So six is still pretty conservative then with that metric. And we can figure that they're still going to keep growing that dividend yield um, as time goes on by about, you know, two to five percent. And it can be even higher than that. So I just took three and then did over 15 years. You can see in 15 years time, you guys will then exceed your W-2 income or whatever your income was for generating this portfolio. And now you're actually at over $90,000 in annual dividend income off of this portfolio. And that's just from a 0% uh, percent price appreciation, right? But you can see here the exact same metric, except saying the share price went up 3% yearly. That drops you almost $30,000 in dividend income. And that's because the share price has continued to climb. And so your dividends were buying less uh, shares. So you can see why it behooves of you to have uh, more buying power in a bear market because you're able to buy a lot more bang for your buck. So this is why I always show value investors why it's crucial to continue to buy and, you know, forbear and kind of get rid of the idea of the naysayers out there that are all running and losing a lot of money. As long as you're investing in good, solid investments, none of that should matter. And lastly, I want to leave you guys with this, and that is buy more when things are on sale and be humble when others are greedy and make sure to be greedy, AKA buy more when others are scared, the markets are down and people are selling off at a discount because that's the true path to wealth. And that's a famous quote, not word for word, but from Warren Buffett. All right. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Stay in there. Remember, we'll all get there together. This is the Fire Fund Movement in the Vision Fire Financials channel. You guys take care and have a great day.